Hi everyone, in this video we are going to talk about temporomandibular joint, specifically the articulating surfaces, articular disc, TMJ ligaments and the joint type. The surfaces that articulate to form the temporomandibular joint are the articular eminence also known as articular tubercle, mandibular fossa or the articular fossa and the condyle of the mandible. The mandibular fossa and the articular tubercle are of squamous area of the temporal bone. One of the key characteristics of this joint is that the articulating surfaces are covered by fibrocartilage, unlike hyaline cartilage that covers most of the joints in the human body. Next, let's look into the articular capsule and the disc. The articular capsule, also known as the capsular ligament, is a thin, loose envelope that surrounds the joint and attaches above to the articular tubercle and below to the neck of the condyle of the mandible. Between the articulating surfaces lies the articular disc also known as the meniscus. It provides cushioning effect to the joint. It's divided into three zones. First one is the posterior zone that lies right above the condyle in the joint space. Second, intermediate zone and third, anterior zone. The articular disc is biconcave or oval in shape and it's thicker at the periphery and thinner at the central portion. Posteriorly, the disc is contiguous with the posterior attachment tissue, which is called as the retrodiscal lamina or the bilaminar zone. Unlike the disc itself, the retrodiscal lamina is vascular and highly innervated because of which it is often a major contributor to pain of temporomandibular disorders. This happens particularly when there is inflammation or compression within the joint. The articulating disc it divides the joint space into two compartments, the superior synovial cavity and the inferior synovial cavity. The cavity itself is filled with synovial fluid and has a capacity of about 1 cc or less. There are three ligaments associated with the temporomandibular joint, one major and two minor ligaments. The major ligament is the temporomandibular ligament or the lateral ligament. The minor ligaments are the stylomandibular and the sphenomandibular ligaments. The accessory ligaments that are the minor ligaments, they are not directly attached to any part of the joint. The base of the temporomandibular ligament is attached to the zygomatic process of the temporal bone and the articular tubercle and at apex it's fixed to the lateral side of the neck of the mandible. The stylomandibular ligament runs from the styloid process to the angle of the mandible. The sphenomandibular ligament runs from the spine of the sphenoid bone to the lingula of the mandible. The temporomandibular ligament, it prevents the excessive retraction or backward movement of the mandible, which obviously if occurs can lead to problems within the joint. The stylomandibular ligament separates the parotid and the submandibular salivary gland. Both the minor ligaments, that is the stylomandibular and the sphenomandibular ligaments, become taut when the mandible is protruded, that is moved forward. These ligaments are very important as they define the border movements or in other words the farthest extent of the movements of the mandible. Movements past these borders are rarely achieved in a normal function. Hence, if movements are made past the extent that is functionally allowed by the muscular attachments, it will lead to a painful stimuli. Next, let's look into the temporomandibular joint classification. I'll be talking about three types, bilateral diarthrosis, ginglimoarthroidal joint and compound joint. There's also a fourth type that is complex joint which I will touch on lightly. The first one is bilateral diarthrosis. Bilateral because it's present on both the sides and they function together. Diarthrosis meaning synovial joint. A synovial joint joins the bone with a fibrous joint capsule that is continuous with the periosteum of the joint bones. Now this is easy to remember because we've already studied the anatomy of the joint and we know that TMJ has a synovial cavity, is filled with synovial fluid, etc. Alright, moving on next is ginglimoarthroidal joint which is a hinging and a gliding joint. Ginglimus meaning hinge joint, it allows motion in one plane such as backward and forward motion. Arthroidal that is gliding joint is a common type of synovial joint that is formed between bones that meet at flat or nearly flat surfaces. It allows the bones to glide past one another in any direction along the plane of the joint. Lastly, TMJ is a compound joint. A compound joint is formed when three or more skeletal elements come together. In case of TMJ, three elements are the mandibular fossa, condyle and the articulating disc. Of these three elements, the articulating disc is a non-ossified element, an important point to remember that can crop up in 
a lot of competitive exams. So TMJ is a compound joined by structure. However, if asked by function, then it's a complex joint. So by structure, a compound joint, by function, a complex joint. That's all I have for this video for you guys. And thank you so much for watching this. I really hope this was helpful for all the viewers out there. See you guys in my next video.